Welcome to Guyanin Web Browser's bi-weekly call for the 22nd of September 2020. Uh, we finally released IPFS Web UI, so this, uh, this will be a quick show and tell of what's new in the new releases. Uh, we had two releases, one was like the, the main with features and then was a quick uh, bug fix release that uh, followed uh, Shortly after that, uh, this web UI will land uh, in, before we go to the show and tell, this web UI will land in GoIPFS 0.7 and the next version of IPFS desktop. Um, we, we got IPFS desktop and IPFS companion releases scheduled to release soon, so probably uh, the next time on this call we'll uh, discuss those. Uh, Jessica, do you want to like make a quick show and tell of uh, the UI changes. I can put later uh, demo the remote API because uh, I got I local setup. I don't have a web UI up at the moment, but if you give me a minute. Oh, sure. At this point, I don't even remember what was <laughs> what's in. Great that you asked. So ah. I... <laughs> Here's what we made earlier. Yeah, so um, like the change list is pretty massive. Uh, uh, yes. uh, the things that we, I think we would uh, like to highlight is uh, CLI to mode and uh, probably the changes around uh, super breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs, um, the welcome page, oh. the continuity. And I can like, demo the remote API with a basic auth because okay. I, uh, I got Because you have one handy. All right. Yeah. May I share my screen? Yep. All righty. All right, so here we have ourselves a beautiful web UI with its streamlined sidebar menu there, um, including this guy here. So uh, we were realizing that we had, um, thanks to a contributor, to Andrew's contributor, who said the welcome messaging is kind of hidden because we weren't really showing that any time other than if you had a blank file screen didn't have any files yet. Um, so we have ourselves a nice little status menu. The nice thing is if you drop, um, drop your connection, it will also reflect that right there in that status screen and give you some things that you can do right away because you probably don't have cores figured out or your API is on the wrong port or something like that. Or you just did like me and you stopped your daemon for a second. But so then you successfully reconnect and you get that, which is wonderful. Um, settings. This is super cool. This came from, oh, and also we rearranged things a little bit more here so that API address um, is easier to change should you wish to reconfigure your API address there. Um, but this is the really cool part, CLI tuner mode. Boink, you turn that on, you notice underneath in the IPS config, IPFS config, you get this little icon. That little icon appears all over the place. So like say here, right? They're all over here. So you could pin, delete, whatever, 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 or you could invoke this CLI tutor mode. And here it says, paste this into your terminal to do this thing in the command line. So if you have just downloaded desktop or you're just using web UI because it's easier, it's a good way to get started in the terminal commands. We also have new and exciting and shiny super breadcrumbs. So, oh good, I do have things. <laughs> And some nested files to demo. All right, so say we've got like all of these, like cats, more cats, even more cats. I could take like this guy here who's sitting in three directories deep, even more cats, and I can do that. And now it's gone, but cube cats in here now. Super shiny. Uh, lots of other small improvements, but those are the major ones. Uh, would you like Lytle to demo the remote? API oh, yeah. authy stuff. Yeah, let me quickly share my screen. Uh, yep, yeah, so this is like the default view when you are connected to IPFS nodes and you can click on advanced to see uh, like more details. Uh, the API here has this edit button. And when you click on it, you got moved to the screen which Jessica showed before. Uh, what's interesting here is that we in this input field, you can like, of course, enter multi others. You can, uh, let me quickly copy. <laughs> uh, you can enter it as regular URL. 
as well. And when you check, it will use URL, which you've passed. But what's uh, probably the even more useful is that uh, now if you have uh, a remote API, which is guarded by basic auth or some custom tokens or any other HTTP based uh, uh, authorization mechanism, uh, we made it possible for people to specify custom headers and just connect to it. Uh, the easiest way is, of course, using basic auth. And in basic auth, it's pretty easy because you can like inline user and password uh, as a part of URL. And if you connect to that, I got a proxy, which is adding uh, basic auth, but it's effectively connecting to the same node. You can see there's a different port. Uh, so if I connected to that, now I no longer see the address here because the address itself uh, includes sensitive credentials and we don't want to link them uh, with like status screenshot uh, that people may use for uh, debugging. So uh, you have this message that it's a custom JSON configuration. And why does it say it's custom JSON configuration? So when you go to uh, settings page, you can see that that inline um, uh, basic auth, those uh, inline basic auth credentials uh, got converted into a JSON. Uh, that's uh, accepted by HTTP client. And it's pretty handy because it not only support basic auth. So basic auth part is this. Here you can see that every request made by web UI will have this additional authorization header, which is uh, just a user and password uh, hashed, uh, in, like encoded as base, not hashed. Uh, however, you could have uh, some uh, like the bearer tokens or API token uh, or any type of custom header that your API is guarded by and you can specify that here. API path uh, can also be customized. So this is a JSON with uh, HTTP client uh, configuration and we don't announce it, but it's, uh, if, you, if someone needs it, it's supported uh, out of the box. Um, and of course, you can like revert back uh, to just a multi other at any point. Um, I've, we had a little, like a multiple requests for various use cases, and I believe now anyone can just implement whatever they use without uh, implementing that in uh, Web UI itself. Uh, all parameters uh, supported by um, HTTP client are supported. So if anything is missing, we'll just add it there and that's it. Um, yep. Do we have anything else? I believe we, we had the missing translations in the web UI as well. We fixed that. So in case uh, yes. someone was curious why translations are missing, they were missing. Yeah. Um, and there's a little bit of a background to that. Um, we did add some extra translation burden with this release. Um, I went through, we had a lot of duplicate internationalization strings um, and really things that were appearing in multiple files that were very, very, very similar. So um, I did go through and clean all of those up. We do have a standard app.json that's now got sort of like the master strings that appear in multiple places. So that should help a lot with consistency. It'll also help us with writing more consistently as we add features going forward, making sure that, um, that they appear in the same voice and the same methodology, same sort of overall mental models we've got. But what that does mean is that um, we did move a lot of internationalization strings around in ways that um, you know, TransFX does do some of this in like automatic mode, but not everything. So um, apologies if you are tuned in on this call and are one of our active translators and you're like, wait, I already did that. So we sincerely apologize. This is a, this is a bit of a tech debt sort of move and, and thanks in advance. Um, something that may like ease the pain is that uh, on TransFX we got a feature enabled called uh, translation memory, uh, yeah. which is uh, kind of like a safety net in case we mess something up 
uh, no translation is ever missed or like uh, ever forgotten or it does, even if it like disappears because we messed up keys and your translation disappeared it's still in the like shared memory between projects so if the same uh, source uh, string appears under a different key it should be picked up automatically or at least you should be you you should see it on the right side as a like well, close to 100 percent match and i think a lot of that i think i think that should um that robot should take care of most of it but there are going to be a few things that are going to need to be retranslated by hand yep. uh just uh, just to close like the show and tell section maybe i'll quickly uh, give a sneak peek of a uh, new release of desktop we will be shipping go ipfs 0.7 uh may probably this week maybe next week uh, and it will include this uh, new web ui as well so stay tuned uh companion we may decrease the scope we'll see how this uh, oh goes. come on <laughs> it's a full screen. that's However, my fault i'm like maybe i'll put this in the milestone it's, it's, it's fine <laughs> this will uh, be easy yeah jokes aside uh i successfully made embedded js apfs run in brave after uh, this async iterables refactor so uh, that was like a huge time sink but now it should uh, go uh, much more smoother um yeah so also like uh, expect release this or next week and yeah i think that's it um the next section is just a quick psa about pinning services <laughs> because why not uh, it would not be a a week without pinning services. Uh, we've uh, shipped uh, 0.1. Uh, this is uh, a proper, hopefully the last release. Uh, ideally, we would just tag um, 1.0 uh, from the same revision without any changes. Uh, the plan is to tag 1.0 when uh, GoIPFS 0.8 ships with a built-in client for this API. So um, it will be, the idea is that uh, GoIPFS uh, itself will uh, give an opt-in uh, capability for people to add a remote service and have uh, ability to uh, pin uh, specific CIDs uh, with additional name to, um, to that remote service. And when uh, GoIPFS 0.8 uh, ships, we'll freeze the spec, so to speak. Uh, in this release, we got two breaking changes because we renamed fields or we introduced more strict uh, uh, structures for error uh, responses. Uh, but, apart from, but apart from that, there were no uh, revolutionary changes, just uh, slow uh, stabilization and clarification. Um, we will be refactoring uh, the Epic for pinning services branch in the following weeks and uh, switching to the new uh, JS HTTP client uh, that uses those new pin remote commands. Um, so I uh, expect interesting updates in the next time we are on this call. But I think that's it for, for now on my end. Iraqli, um, do you want to mention the big refactor that landed in web ui uh yeah uh it landed yesterday uh so there were a lot of changes in terms of how we use uh react uh oh, sorry redux bundler uh, it basically cleared some logic and streamlined it a little bit so it's easier to follow so hopefully it would enable us to make changes faster and more reliable and add some little bit of type script into it too so we can catch changes uh sorry catch errors sooner um yeah yeah cool uh, i believe like rafael was waiting for that without with uh uh before he started uh, final pinning services integration work on the file screen i believe so yeah that be, yeah that would be super useful that we now have it landed and we work on top of it uh yeah oh also uh we will have a progress reporting. <laughs> I, I did not mention that before because it was not, not on the, uh, in, not in release notes, but right now uh, what's 
not like visual, but the one of main improvements in this new web UI that will ship to everywhere soon is that you can just uh, import very big files, like two gigabytes, five, four gigabytes. It will take a moment, but they will import and will not kill your browser, which is very good. Uh, the problem is like for, for now, it just takes a few seconds and nothing happens and we want to add a progress reporting. So I think that will also be uh, landing soon. Yeah, I'm working on that piece and it was also kind of waiting on the big refactor to land first. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, really cool news that it landed and we can move forward with that. All right, folks, uh, any topics you want to add ad hoc? Andrew, how do you feel about new pinning services? I promise to not release new spec anytime soon. Yeah, it, it seems fine on my end. Uh, there's definitely some optimization for that I can imagine clients wanting, but from from a base level, it's, it's, it's good enough to get you there. The thing I jumped to straight away is I want like the web ring of pinning services so that you can, as a client, just bounce and be like, I'll just send out to a number of pinning services that all offer free things so that I get a nice distribution around the internet. But obviously that stuff doesn't come for free forever uh, and people will take advantage of it. So it's, it's not perfect. <laughs> Someone will write a proxy which just like picks a random just credentials. Just round robin which... through every different free <laughs> pinning service, yeah. Uh -huh. Or you could make many different, if you've got um, a open source server implementation like I have, you can just spin it up on every free hosting service you can find, or maybe inside of CI, you can just keep many CI builds going for 24 hours and you're constantly pinning things as long as we, there's always one service. We should not endorse that sort of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Can a pinning server also be a pinning client that pins onto the next one? And then repeatedly, every time that it pins something, it just goes and pins it in the next one. But I appreciate how it will make people excited about the spec. So. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think it's so, good. It'd be yeah. good to have a, a, a um, the JS client as well, so that you can do that from the browser. Um, and then the the next thing I guess that people will reach is the authorization kind of thing. And they'll, they'll want some standardization there at, to be able to like get your access token. And I mean, the access token should, can be anything, but they've got to be a string, right? And they can come from anywhere. So you might, yeah. some might, might need an OAuth dance and others might be a username and password. Thing to get back your token. Yeah. Um, totally, it's like an opaque string, uh, mostly because we had uh, like pre-existing pinning services, which already have some conventions. And then we have uh, like new folks uh, who will be implementing it and may want to pick something else. Um, uh, something that's pretty cool is that uh, when like this API includes additional metadata about uh, providers in request and response, However, when the client is implemented in Go APFS, it will be kind of like hidden behind the curtain. So when you like pin remotely, the Go APFS itself will ensure it shares its uh, multi other directly with pinning service. And then when pinning service responds with uh, multi others of their own nodes, uh, Go APFS will, send, will ensure that local node is connected to a pinning service. So that's all, I mentioned it because it's uh, important for desktop users who are usually behind NATs in uh, networks that have strange topology and this additional metadata dance that we do with pinning service API ensures that you don't need to uh, ask DHT, which may be slow or not all. And even if you get the address, you may not be able to connect to, to it. And uh, by ensuring that we both sides try to proactively connect to each other, uh, that closes the gap with uh, strange network topologies. Another opportunity for pinning services to um, kind of take off might be to get, uh, not sure if it should be client or server, but integration in 
textiles power gate as that is looking like basically Lotus for Filecoin is the least user-friendly thing ever and is highly recommended not to be the like user interface for interacting with Filecoin and Powergate is like this is much friendlier to use so uh, having Powergate given that it is there is IPFS inside it eventually if you can just punch through Powergate to talk to IPFS on 0.8 then you'll be able to use that. But to be able to say like, can I have a nice API that pins to Filecoin as, um, and the PowerGate hot storage for built into the command line for that particular instance would be great. Uh, if you get like the same kind of API, then you can use your whatever pinning client you have to talk to a PowerGate instance and have all of that stuff happen automatically rather than having to Configure it all yourself, which currently is painful, or use a third party service, but then you're like, I have to upload all my files over there, and then they get sent over there, and then they get put in IPFS, and then they go into Filecoin, and then they go into another Filecoin storage node over there. And it's, it's very, very slow and painful. <laughs> and I want to be able to not think about it anymore. Yeah, it's still unclear if it will be a part of PowerGate, or maybe someone will create a kind of like a middleware that sits in, in front of it. Uh, but it definitely, um, that's uh, that's not like on the checklist uh, I, I would like to, to see personally. Also the, uh, the JS client is something we may, uh, we may want to create just like we created the Go uh, client for pinning services API. Uh, and you namely use the JS one for quick, uh, like regression test or compliance tests. So you would have like a web web page, which is using this client. You just enter token and endpoint and it, you press a button and it runs a set of compliance tests, uh, which both test the client and uh, as well uh, the pinning service that you are running it against. Because so I imagine some people may want to, uh, they may have, uh, own orchestration uh, where they have a CID from, they like produce CID by other means and they just want to uh, execute uh, this remote pinning service call without maybe bundling entire JS IPFS or something like that. Um, so the JS client may be useful to have. Okie dokie. We've sprinted through agenda, highlights, and async updates. Do we have any urgent topics that we want to share with community? Or I can always end this call now, and then we will not share stuff with community. All the exciting updates will be, not be recorded. I have nothing more to add. So exciting updates after this recording. See you in two weeks. <laughs>